In this video, we're going to review some simple troubleshooting procedures you can use to diagnose and fix pump issues your truck may be experiencing while out in the field. The first few troubleshooting tips we'll review in this video revolve around having minimal suction on your truck. If you're experiencing a complete loss of suction, please skip ahead to the no suction troubleshooting tips. A common issue that can often occur on older trucks with older vacuum pumps is low suction. Unlike the newer trucks in our fleet, they are not equipped with an automatic PTO governor which throttles the engine up automatically when the PTO is engaged. To rectify this issue on older trucks, we'll first need to put the truck in park with the parking brake on. We'll then activate the truck's PTO. Next, we'll make sure our foot is off the gas and enable the cruise control by pressing the cruise button on the top left of the steering wheel. We'll then press the set button on the top right of the steering wheel. And then lastly, we'll hold the bottom right button to turn up the RPMs. A good rule of thumb is to keep your truck's RPM between 1000 and 1100 RPMs and to not exceed 1200 RPMs. Once we've locked in the RPMs, you should have the appropriate amount of suction for the job. If that doesn't work though, we'll continue on to possible issue number two. After we've established the correct RPMs for our truck, the next thing we'll need to check is to make sure we don't have two inlet valves open at the same time. If both valves are open, the suction power is actually cut in half and is not nearly as effective. If both valves are open, all we'll need to do is simply close one valve on the side of the truck that's not being utilized, and this should restore full pressure. If this does not rectify the issue though, we'll need to continue on. If you happen to experience low pressure throughout the day and there's a high-pitched hissing sound coming from your host connection, there's a good chance you may have an O-ring that needs to be replaced. Unfortunately, the only way to fix this issue is to have the O-ring replaced back at the shop. In situations like these, it's best to note it on your post-trip paperwork and then consider using the hose on the other side of your truck until the issue is rectified. If you're still having suction issues after this though, we'll need to continue on. If all checks out thus far, we'll next need to check the vacuum pressure valve located on top of the pump. On occasion, this large valve can work itself loose throughout the day. If that were to happen, we'd certainly experience a loss of suction. To rectify the issue, we'll simply need to push the lever into the vacuum position until it no longer moves. If this were causing the issue, the vacuum suction should quickly resume. If not, we'll need to continue on. If the truck you're using was pumping fine and then suddenly stops, it may be because the waste tank is actually full. The first thing we'll need to do is check the sight bubbles on the side of the truck. If the bubble near the top of the tank is no longer clear, it's a good sign the waste tank is probably full. Another way to test this is by tapping on the side of your truck with a piece of rebar or some other solid object to listen to the sound of the tank. A full tank sounds more like a thud while an empty tank sounds more like a gong. If the tank is full, you'll need to notify dispatch of the issue and await further instructions. If not, we'll continue on. Once we've confirmed the truck still has room, the next thing to check for is to make sure we haven't sucked something up by accident. To rectify this issue, we'll first need to remove the wand and investigate it to see if we can visually see a clog. If a clog is spotted, we'll need to clear it by using a teepee rod, a scrub brush handle, or even some pliers on your truck. If the wand appears clear from obstructions, we'll then need to inspect the hose. To inspect the hose, we'll first look into the end that was connected to the wand to identify any potential obstructions. If there are no obstructions, we'll remove the other end of the hose where it's connected to the truck. Never, I repeat never, attempt to check the connection by the truck without first inspecting the wand. This is because if there's a clog near the wand, the hose may still be backfilled with waste. Therefore, when you disconnect that end from your truck, you may be getting a shower you won't soon forget. If there's some resistance when trying to remove the hose from the truck, it may still have negative vacuum pressure inside of it, indicating a clog is in the hose. However, if there's no resistance, continue removing the hose from the truck. Once the hose is separated with the PTO engaged, we'll slowly open the valve of the truck. If there's vacuum pressure at the valve, we know the clog is for sure located somewhere in the hose. 
We'll then close the valve and investigate each end of the hose that was connected to the truck to locate any obstructions. If we can't find any obstructions, we'll need to take the end of the hose that was connected to the wand and now connect it to the valve on the truck. This will reverse the airflow in the hose to hopefully loosen up whatever may still be wedged inside. Once again, open the valve on the truck and wait a moment to see if there's any difference. If the hose begins to move on the ground, it means the clog is freeing itself and moving into the truck. If the clog doesn't free itself on the first try, we'll need to repeatedly switch the hoses that are connected until the obstruction is ultimately vacuumed into the truck or simply pulled to one end of the hose where it can be removed manually. If we're unable to unclog the hose, we'll need to note it on our post-trip paperwork so a mechanic can diagnose it later. We'll then simply swap the hose from one side of the truck to the other. If we're without any additional hoses though, we'll need to contact dispatch and await further instructions. Once we've confirmed our truck's holding tank has room and there are no clogs in the hose, we'll want to inspect our secondary trap and oil separator tanks. Both of these tanks are used to catch any runoff waste or oil that may have occurred while in transport. It's important to know that these tanks will often need to be drained every two to three days to keep your truck's vacuum system running properly. This task is often performed by our yard team, however, some branches may have their drivers complete this task. We'll start by locating our secondary trap. Once located, we'll need to place a bucket under the secondary trap and open the valve at the bottom of that tank. Lastly, we'll need to put the pump into the neutral position so air can flow back into the system, allowing the tank to fully drain. If we notice a large amount of fluid exiting the tank, this may have been what was causing our issue to begin with. Once this tank is drained, we'll move on to drain the oil separator. This is often located next to your pump and has a valve on it as well. We'll simply open that valve and wait for all the oil to drain. Once the tanks are drained, we will need to close both valves and flip it from neutral to vacuum. And then retest the system to see if suction has resumed. If it has, we'll then proceed to suck up anything that may have drained in the bucket, returning it to the truck, and we'll continue on with our route. If we're still having issues though, we'll need to continue on. Finally, if all else fails and you've confirmed your truck has room and your hoses are clear and functional, we'll need to check your truck's PTO sleeve. A PTO sleeve is a safety device designed to break free if there are any issues with your PTO or your pump. Once it breaks, the truck's vacuum system will no longer receive power from the engine. One sign you may be dealing with a broken PTO sleeve is a burning rubber smell or possibly smoke which is radiating from behind the truck's cab where the friction is occurring. If this occurs while on route, unfortunately there's nothing you're going to be able to do to rectify this issue. You'll need to contact dispatch at this point who will then direct you to the mechanic team who will hopefully end up bringing you a new truck to finish your day. So in conclusion, those are the simple steps that we'll use to troubleshoot any low pressure or no suction issues that could commonly occur on your truck. If at any point you ever have any questions throughout the day, please don't hesitate to contact your manager or a local supervisor. Good luck.